This is why I own gold <laughs> and silver. Physical, in my possession, without any counterparty risk. This is labor-based and savings-based. It's a commodity money that's used across every single sector of the global economy. That's why it's never gone to zero, okay? And like I said before, right, the way tangibles run, you know, from undervaluation to fair valuation to overvaluation to fair valuation to undervaluation in a trip, you know, in a, in a constant figure eight. So, this is private. You hold it. You own it. It runs no counterparty risk. They transitioned us into Federal Reserve notes, which are debt instruments, right? And in that way, once they started controlling the interest rates, they were able to, you know, we, they got us first. We had gold certificates and silver certificates, right? Well, you could go into the bank and exchange them. Then they gave us Federal Reserve notes took away our ability to exchange it, but hey, people were already used to those dollars, right? And of course, they took the gold and backed the new currency with the gold. So with the dollars, they could control inflation more. So it gave the government a tool of inflation with our, a tool of taxation, which is the almost invisible inflation tax without having to go through legislation. How mm -hmm. handy is that? OK, now we want to go into programmable money, right? So you're losing your purchasing power over time with Federal Reserve notes by design because inflation was baked into the, the system. It's not a monetary phenomenon. It's a fiat money phenomenon, government debt based monetary phenomenon. So you still had some level of privacy because if you hold the bills, you hold the cash, it's not really visible to them. But we go into this next system, that's programmable money. So you don't do what we want you to do, boom, that's a button push and you are done. You, they can dictate where you shop, when you shop, how often you shop. They can tell you how long the, the money has a lifespan. Money had four functions. It was a tool of measure, a medium of exchange, a short-term store of value, so you're fairly paid for your labor, and a long-term store of value, so that no matter when you use that money, you're being fairly paid for your labor, because that's what money represents, right? Yeah. Well, they I can't tell you when they did this, because I was shocked that they didn't. I couldn't find out exactly when this shifted, so they scrubbed all their data. But they took away the long-term store of value. Of course, anybody that uses dollars knows that they buy less and less over time, right? So mm -hmm. at least it's more honest. But when they come into the CBDCs, they are scrapping the short-term store of value. This is from them. This is not my opinion. This is from them. Because when you make that deposit of your paycheck into the bank, that's already trading at negative rates because they push that button because they want you to spend. So now you're not even going to be short term fairly paid for your labor and money will simply be, if they have their way, will simply be a tool of measure and a tool of barter. First, they were talking about uh, debt, that it would be based on debt. Right. So that means they have to clean up all this old debt that's unpayable so we can go into the new system based on debt. But the most current work that I've seen on it, it's going to be based on transactions. So I want to buy a boat. Boom, boom. The Fed will create new money for that boat. Now, they might not create new money if I want to buy gold. Hmm. Right. But they will create that new money if I want to buy a boat. Well, let's think about this. How much value can something like that have or hold? So they're taking away your ability, the individual's ability to plan for the future. And they've already made it complicated. I mean, <laughs> they've been manipulating things uh, officially. It was long before this, truthfully, but officially, since 1948, we have officially 
been in a series of financial repression that forces people to go out and take more risk if they want to maintain their standard of living because of the inflation that is built into the system. So the reason why you would buy it would frankly be the same reason why the central bankers are buying it. And it's so that you maintain your purchasing power and therefore you maintain your choices because this truly is decentralized. And according to the Bank for International Settle Settlements, Central Bank or Central Bank, uh, this has this is the only financial asset, the only financial asset that runs zero counterparty risk. It is also mm -hmm. a proven inflation hedge. It is also the go-to safe asset in uh, a geopolitical event. And here's my favorite one. Gold held at home runs no political risk. So you do this to, to be out of the system that is collapsing. And I don't care if the stock market goes to the moon, the real trend is the purchasing power. Because if you look at Zimbabwe, you can be a billionaire and you can't afford three eggs, right? So it doesn't matter how many pieces of paper or nominally what that number looks like, it matters what you can do with this. When you hear them talk about a strong dollar, it's in relative terms. So it's one fiat currency, government debt-based currency against another government debt-based currency. And recently when they raise the interest rates, so when the Fed raises interest rates, in theory, and sometimes in practicality for a minute, when they raise interest rate, that attracts buyers of the dollar and dollar debt because you're earning interest on that. See, so they poo poo gold because you don't, gold does not have to pay interest because it's not a risk asset, right? But they raise those interest rates. Here's the problem though. And so we're now in a period where the dollar is declining against those other currencies because as the world reserve currency and everything being in relative terms, it was costing other countries more. It doesn't matter how many of those dollars you have. It matters what you can buy with it. We are at the mm -hmm. end of the currency's life cycle. They have virtually, you know, and I mean, really everybody should, if you said to me, okay, you only have one chart to work with. And I like my charts because I think it makes it very visual what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say.